The court will inform Altan Khan that they have a number of reasons to doubt that his message is genuine. Number one, it is not in the script of the barbarians. Number two, the message did not reach the emperor by the appropriate means. The sublime ruler therefore demands that Altan Khan withdraw his forces at once and that he make another formal request for trading relations via the garrison at Xuanfu. The court's tactics worked. Altan Khan withdrew from Beijing. His decision still puzzles historians today. Chang 那就完全想要吞并中原，而他最终达到了这个目的。Mere months after Altan Khan's attack, the Chinese open up trading posts at some of the northern forts. Recently, the remains of a trading station were found at Yulin Garrison. Archaeologists uncovered the foundations of a gate here in this wall, through which the merchants could pass in and out. But the new freedom of movement didn't last long. By the next year, the markets were closed down. was when construction began on the greatest defensive structure China and the world had ever seen. Between 1550 and 1644, the stone dragon came to life. China's great wall was completed. became a monument to the closed world view of the Ming Empire. It enclosed their own universe and excluded everything that was foreign. To the north of Beijing, it curves majestically through the mountain ranges. It follows the natural line of the mountain peaks, reaching breathtaking heights before plunging into the deepest ravines. At its eastern end, in Shanghai Guan, it strides straight into the Yellow Sea. From this head of the dragon to the first earthen tower in the west, the Ming Wall is more than 6,000 kilometers long. The sometimes bizarre route taken by this wall has led many experts to believe that more than just defensive considerations went into its planning. For generations, the Chinese had believed in the practice of feng shui, the teachings of wind and water. Feng shui experts were probably consulted and obeyed before the building of the wall began to make sure that the forces of nature would work in its favor.
But when it came to the construction itself, spiritual aspects took second place. It was all about quality, efficiency, and speed. An army commander was in charge of each building detail. He was responsible for seeing that they keep to the timetable, if necessary, with the use of force. Most of the workers were recruited from the army or were pressed into service as civilians. The speed and harshness with which the plans were executed put a terrible strain on both men and the supply of materials. victims the wall claimed. We're told that a three-kilometer section of wall was completed in 600 days by just 3,000 men. The older walls of compressed earth could use materials that lay at hand, but the materials for the Ming wall of the 16th century had to be manufactured. This meant an extensive network of quarries, kilns, and the supply routes to connect them. Countless brickworks were created for the greatest building site of the empire. The costs of this gigantic project became a heavier and heavier burden on the state. carried the bricks from the kilns to the construction sites in the mountains. Some traveled 80 kilometers. Beasts of burden joined humans in carrying bricks to the construction sites. Entire herds worked only on the building of the wall. Even goats did their bit. The animals got so used to the work that once unloaded, they would turn around and go straight back down the valley for their next load. It took just a hundred years to build the greatest defensive fortifications the world had ever known. But the Great Wall is not a single wall at all. It's actually a system of several defensive lines. Watchtowers are strung out along the main wall. When the enemy is spotted, they light an alarm beacon. In the meantime, the 50 to 100 men in each tower hurry along the top of the wall to the point of the attack. Meanwhile, reinforcements arrive from the garrison towers, which hold up to 10,000 battle-ready soldiers. At least that's the theory. The reality was rather different. For months on end, the border guards were banished to the frozen mountain regions, exposed to the cruel weather. Cut off from the rest of the world, serving out their time in the towers or roughing it in their sparse accommodation. <laughs> 